So last year, an international team of scientists working with the LIGO scientific collaboration, an experiment designed to detect gravitational waves coming from deep space, just announced that they had made an amazing discovery. They had discovered gravitational waves coming from the collisions of two black holes happening in the very distant and dark universe, more than a billion light years away from us. Now, this was a really astonishing discovery, one that changed the face of science forever, one that is a huge leap forward for the entire humanity. It did confirm that, indeed, black holes exist, and they can uh, orbit around each other and produce gravitational waves. In the actual video that you see here, we have two black holes uh, orbiting and dragging the space and time around each other. And in the process of dragging the space and time, they do uh, create waves in the fabric of the space-time itself. These waves do propagate at the speed of light to Earth, and they do and that's what LIGO detected. So now, for the purpose of this visualization, the two black holes are orbiting at a speed that you can actually, your eyes can catch. But in reality, during this collision, the black holes are actually orbiting at nearly half the speed of light. And when they do crash into each other, they cause these violent bursts of waves. These waves is so powerful that it can outshine all stars in the universe in just a fraction of a second. Now, this is an important discovery because Einstein had predicted that uh, space and time indeed could curve and that massive objects would create the ripple in space-time that are indeed gravitational waves that you see here. So the effect of the gravitational waves is to actually stretch and compress, stretch and compress the space and time. So everything lives in the space-time, including yourself right now. Nothing can escape really space-time. So when a gravitational wave pass by to you, it will stretch and compress you. Did you ever feel it? Did you feel this? Well, in reality, you see that the effect that you see here on Earth is really being exaggerated. So the effect is so tiny that you need very complex science and uh, very careful experiments to detect this effect in reality. It did require more than a thousand scientists working together to assemble this experiment, which is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or in short, LIGO. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory that you see here, there are actually two detectors. One is in the state of Louisiana in Lincoln, and the other one in the state of Washington in Hanford. As you can see, these detectors have a particular shape. They have an L shape. And the reason is because gravitational waves, they do stretch and compress, stretch and compress. So the design of the gravitational wave uh, detectors have been, uh, has been made to exactly to detect this effect. Except that this effect is so tiny that the technology that scientists and engineers have to build in this detector is amazing. In fact, what LIGO can measure is so tiny that it's smaller than the width of a proton. It is actually one ten thousand of the width of the proton. So now in the next video, will actually zoom in in 
a nitrogen atom and go down several orders of magnitude up to the tiny change that LIGO had detected. This is truly amazing. In fact, LIGO is the most accurate physics experiment ever been devised in humankind. If this doesn't impress you, let me tell you that this is equivalent to measuring the distance to the nearest star, which is Proxima Centauri, which is 4.3 light years away from us, to the precision of, a, of 10 microns, and that is the size of a human hair. Now I want to tell you a little bit more what I do uh, in my own research. And I am an astrophysicist, and I do actually work in colliding black holes, but I do not observe them. I do actually solve the Einstein's equations uh, to predict what happens when these black holes collide. Now, the Einstein's equation, you see, they are very complicated equations. Although Einstein wrote them in a very compact form, in reality, they are so complex that they do include hundreds of terms. So we do require the use of supercomputers to solve them. We cannot solve them in a pen pencil and paper. It did require also a number of scientists working together, trying to succeed in solving these equations. It has been more than four decades that the science community have been trying to solve these equations. And until 2005, we didn't know how to tell a supercomputer how to deal with a black hole. That changed then when three groups independently solved this problem. And then LIGO detected gravitational waves from binary black holes. This is actually a figure taken from the first scientific publication of the discovery that LIGO made. In the first row, you see actually the form of the gravitational waves that LIGO detected. These are the real data that enter it into the detectors. So you see the one that was taken in Humphrey and the one in Louisiana. They do much. They work two independent detectors, and they both saw the same signal. And that is striking by itself. The second row instead show the actual numerical simulation of the same binary black hole that LIGO detected. And the models build out of that sim numerical simulation. Now, if you take the waveform that is in the second row and you subtract it from the data, you obtain just pure noise. So this is amazing. When I first, first saw this, it was a very emotional moment for me. Today, scientists, computational physicists like myself, we are working in producing many more models of these waveforms. Now, you can see here that we have like a huge table there are actually many more than this, um, a huge table of waveforms. And they all, different, they all look different. They have different shape, different length. And that is because the waveform, um, the waveforms that represent the gravitational waves, do change depending on the masses of the black holes and how fast they are rotating. So we can extract a lot of information by knowing the exact form of the gravitational wave, by solving the Einstein's equation and predicting exactly what LIGO should observe. Now, in the future, we are hoping to build better and more sensitive detectors. We would like to detect uh, other sources than black holes colliding black holes. For example, there are other types of sources that generate gravitational waves, um, the collisions of two neutron stars, or violent explosions of stars 
or spinning neutron stars, or the Big Bang itself caused gravitational waves. But we need more sensitive detectors to detect those waves. And in the future, we would like to go to space because then we can measure the gravitational waves that have longer periods than the ones that LIGO was able to detect. And those would be the gravitational waves coming from, for example, the collisions of supermassive black holes that lurks at the centers of galaxies. Those black holes weighed in more than a million to billions solar masses. And because uh, the history of the galaxies are very linked to the actual history of the black holes at their center, we can learn a lot about what's happening in the universe this way. So we have just unleashed a new era of gravitational wave astronomy. And this is because gravitational waves are totally different from light. There are different type of messenger coming to us from the universe. And it is extremely ex exciting now for anyone studying the universe jumping into this field. So stay tuned for more discovery and perhaps new surprises. Thank you. <laughs>